Okay, let's go. Okay, everyone, welcome to Chattahoochee River Keepers webinar. Let's chat what's in your beer. My name is Kelsey Poto, and I am the features reporter and craft beer columnist with the Gainesville Times in Gainesville, Georgia. Today, we've got some experts in Georgia's craft beer industry here to talk with us about the quality beer tour they're participating in, as well as some of their tasty brews. So, if you're now tuning in, I'm just reminding you. Um, to please mute your microphone and turn off your video. And also, uh, we encourage you guys to post any questions you may have as we talk. We're gonna take some time at the end of the webinar to address those. Uh, so everyone, please say, say hello to Brian Sullivan with Steady Hand Beer Company in Atlanta and uh, Doug Dixing with Left Nut Brewing in Gainesville and Mark Crouch from Terrapins ATL Brew Lab. We also have Becca Powell with Chattahoochee Riverkeeper, um, who's gonna shed some light on this fun beer initiative that's going on with her nonprofit and a select uh, number of breweries around Georgia. For those who are unfamiliar with the nonprofit, Chattahoochee Riverkeeper, they're devoted towards protecting our main water source in Georgia, the Chattahoochee River, through monitoring trash cleanups and neighborhood water watches and many other programs and initiatives. So let's dive in you guys. Becca, tell us about this quality beer tour and how it got started. Awesome, I'm happy to. Thanks Kelsey. Um, and thank you brewery partners for joining us today. Uh, so this all was start, I'll give you a little bit of a history. So in 2015, we were approached by the Orvis company. If you're not familiar with the Orvis company, they're fly fishing and apparel company. And um, they said, you know, we really want to give back to Chattahoochee Riverkeeper. Your mission is, you know, really important to us. Our customers are out in the river every day, recreating, so on and so forth. Uh, so they established the Quality Hooch Campaign, which has raised over $100,000 for our water monitoring initiatives since 2016. Over the course of the past year, that partnership, uh, you know, while it started as an opportunity for us to engage what we call the hook and bullet crowd, which are fly anglers, hunters, you know, outdoorsmen, um, it really started to, to take on um, all recreation on the Chattahoochee River. So paddling, people who are out, you know, hiking the CRNRA, people who are going up to Helen to shoot the hooch and go tubing. Um, so this year, uh, we decided that we were going to expand the very successful campaign. Um, last year was our 25th anniversary. Chattahoochee Riverkeeper has been around for 26 years. Uh, so last year was a great opportunity for us to look at our partnerships uh, all along the watershed. And we decided as an organization, you know, we've had a number of exclusive partnerships since we uh, started our work in 1994, uh, but it's been 25 years and over 5 million people rely on the Chattahoochee River for drinking water, electricity, recreation, commerce, etc. So we should be celebrating all of those people. So that led us to um, sort of do a stem off of the Quality Hooch campaign. And we said, why don't we celebrate all of the incredible craft breweries who rely on the Chattahoochee River to make their product? So the Quality Beer Tour was born and um, we, announced it, I guess, last fall and sort of opened it up as a first come, first serve. And it was incredible, the amount of emails that came through my inbox of uh, breweries saying, you know, we understand that water and enough clean water is super important for our business. We want to get on board. So we have three of those seven partners with us today, Terrapin, Left Nut, and Steady Hand. Um, seven breweries each own the month where they pledge to uh, as, develop a beer uh, that would benefit Chattahoochee Riverkeeper that would sort of tell their story of you know what clean water meant for them what recreation on the water meant for them you know whatever take they wanted to to go with uh, part of that was also um, hosting a beer release party, a cleanup, and some sort of outing. And um, I know 
you're probably going to ask me a question since the, all of this started last year and early this year, and then we got hit with this global pandemic. So, yeah. So how did that affect the initiative? Um, it, we sort of had to go with the flow, as we like to say in the office. And um, what was first, what was meant to be, you know, a number of in-person engagement opportunities um, to share our stories, both our brewery partner stories, as well as, as of course, uh, Chattahoochee Riverkeepers uh, and our long history in the community of um, keeping watch over our waters. Uh, so we had to go mobile and go, you know, take our marketing online through social media, through eblast, through our website. Um, so we did cancel just for the safety of our staff and of course our, our members, we did cancel all of the in-person events uh, with the exception of um, our Sweep the Hooch event, which is at the end of this month. And we reached out to the brewery partners and said, you know, while we're not having the individual cleanups or outings, here's an opportunity for you guys to, to get together and to have your brands, uh, you know, pushed out to the public. That event brings out like 1,200 plus volunteers typically every year. So um, yeah, just had to revise things a little bit and, uh, but still we've had so much momentum with this, with this idea and with this campaign and uh, just thrilled that our partners are able to help share how important it is uh, not only to keep our waters clean, but to drink good beer, right guys? <laughs> yeah, so let's dive in into talking about this beer. Uh, so Mark, could you tell us a little bit about the role water quality plays in making your beer? Sure, absolutely. And first of all, thank you so much for, uh, for inviting us. Uh, we're really excited to be part of this initiative. Uh, and hello to the other uh, participating breweries. Can't wait to taste y'all's uh, uh, entries into this uh, into this fundraiser. So, water quality obviously really really important uh, to finished beer. Uh, water, and I know Brian's going to get into a little bit of a discussion about uh, you know how water chemistry can affect the overall flavor profile of your beer. But water is the number one ingredient in beer, representing between 90 and 95 percent of the uh, of the total product that ends up in your can or bottle. Uh, or your or your glass, um, but it's also really important because brewing is a really water intensive industry. We use uh, we use water for cleaning and for cooling and for packaging, many other things besides what actually ends up uh, inside your glass of beer. Um, in many communities, water uh, breweries are actually the number one consumer of water for that uh, for that municipality, um, and also the number one contributor to organic material. Uh, being delivered back to that uh, community's wastewater treatment plant. So for that reason, last year at our brewery in Athens uh, in 2019, we built a wastewater pretreatment facility. Um, so we're able to remove a lot of the organic material, you know, the effluent, the, the stuff that the, that the municipality would have to deal with. We're able to remove that uh, before we send it back to the local sewer system, um, which really mitigates the amount of work that the local community has to do. And, and ultimately, most importantly, um, it really helps to ensure the quality of the local watershed. So really important to us. Um, some other things that we do around the brewery to reduce our consumption of water, uh, like uh, recapturing steam condensate and reusing it. Um, standardized CIP practices clean in place. So we're cleaning all of our uh, brewing tanks and fermenters um, to reduce our, our water usage as much as possible. Wow, thanks for sharing that. Absolutely. Interesting. Uh, so, so Brian, I, I spoke with you last week and you mentioned something about how regional water sources can affect um, the flavor profile and, and beer. Could you expand a little bit on that? Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, you know, kind of, um, you know, when you get into brewing, they, they tell you about the historic brewing cities around the world and their, their water profiles and why London Porter tastes a certain way versus, you know, if you brewed it out of Manchester or you know, different parts of Dortmund and why their water source or, you know, all those things kind of play into why certain beer styles evolved potentially in, in, a, in an area um, like Pilsner water, for example, Pilsner Akel water is, you know, famously very, very low in minerals. Um, and mm -hmm. in a way, it kind of mirrors what we get out of the Chattahoochee. So, uh, you know, you know, you can kind of have a sort of terroir to your own beer based on your water profile. 
So, you know, you can kind of make a decision if you want to add additional minerals, uh, depending on what the beer style needs, or you can go in a naked sort of way and just kind of roll with, this is what our water source is, and this is the beer style that can make it. So uh, for our lager, uh, particularly, we don't add a whole lot to it. It's just, it's the water that we get uh, really close to a treatment plant. So ours is uh, fairly clean. We do clear, you know, get a uh, carbon filtration to get the chlorine out of it. But for the most part, it's, it's kind of a cool little way to, to brew, to think about, you know, this is what your water source is and it's mineral is what it is. So it's kind of cool to make a beer based on your cool raw material. That's so cool. Wow. Um, yeah. So, so Doug, I'd love to speak with you uh, over there at Left Nut. Um, I know that you're a big supporter of Chattahoochee River Keeper. So tell me about what inspired you to join this quality beer store. I'll, I'll add to what Mark and Brian just said is since water is so important and we're the headwaters brewery, so we get all our water coming right up right up from here and we when we get rid of it it ends up through the through the local water treatment system back into Lake Lanier really critical to us that we have pure water um, so the context of what we want to do is make sure it comes into us clean we do our filtration system carbon and others to make sure that we understand exactly the water goes into our beers that was a start how do we help the community keep the Chattahoochee clean so that we can continue to be using good clean water into our brews and have a consistent product that the consumers would love to have. That, that's what got us is like, how do we help? That's great. So, so tell us a little bit about your beer, Pure Source IPA. Well, well Pure Source, this is what it looks like. It, um, available throughout the Atlanta area um, and Gainesville and bars and restaurants and whatever. So, Corpus Sober, the way we built it is it's the summer beer. So you don't want it to be too hoppy, didn't want it to have too much alcohol, didn't want to have too much, too much. But we wanted it to be right on style with what our consumers liked here in the summer. So it's juicy, it's soft. Um, I'll take it a New England style, but there's a little bit of West Coast in it. So it's a kind of a mishmash of a whole lot of stuff. But, so it, but it, the goal was refreshing. And if you're outside in some moderate temperature, like 95 degrees, you could drink drink them and enjoy them um, on an ongoing basis. So it was really designed as using pure water, which is why it has the name Pure Source IPA, and, and make it a easy drinking all day type beer, five and a half percent alcohol, um, and a very, that was a very conscious effort to keep it uh, good, good flavor, but not overdo the alcohol piece based on the style that we wanted to go after. Mm -hmm. So what do you personally love the most about this beer? Of this beer or beer? Yeah. Pure well, source. So, uh, I mean, you can talk about all beer, yeah, but well, this I'll one in particular. So, so, so this one is just literally easy drinking. So mm -hmm. I find that out and about after doing some yard work or you know, spending the time out on the river, it gets hot and something with deep flavor. Yeah, you can have one, but it then it gets kind of, it gets too heavy to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a lager drinker, so people say, oh, I just drink lager. It's like, why? So the idea is I, I don't like, drink, I'm not a lager guy. So this is my idea of a great, easy, smooth IPA. Um, it has enough flavor to it without being overpowering. Um, and it's just easy. So that's, that's my take is it's, it has lots of flavors, a lot of subtle flavors, um, but none of, no one is overpowering to say, oh my gosh, it's too much of that or et cetera. Yeah, so we've got another beer too that we're going to talk about called Solace Dreams, uh, which recently came out from Steady Hand Beer Co. So yeah, Brian, tell me a little bit about this uh, beautiful beer. As you can see, it's got a rainbow trout can design. Pretty, pretty stunning. <laughs> yeah, so that, that was a fun one. We, uh, you know, we kind of took some of the same approach that Doug does uh, with kind of like we, we took it from an experience work backwards. If you spent the day on the river and whether you caught a trout or you failed miserably like I usually do, um, or you're just floating along, like what kind of hoppy sort of flavor would you want? But, uh, you know, refreshing enough to maybe you want to have two or three of those because it's a hot day and you kind of earned it, you know? And um, <laughs> so we, we went with the double IPA, but on the lower side of double IPA, so um, kind of a mid 7% alcohol range. 
Uh, we did hoppiness more for hop flavor and aroma and kept the bitterness really kind of low. Um, but for us, the finished pH on that beer and kind of keeping it nice and refreshing uh, without going too dry on it. So it's nice and bright and kind of refreshing on the, on the, on the finish. So you do kind of want that other one. And, you know, um, for us, it was kind of how do we do some cool hop flavor, get some nice fruity, juicy notes in there, uh, layer a few different hop styles together and some different dry hopping techniques to just have some fun with it. Um, but the cool thing for us is uh, the name is inspired by um, an old Isaac Walton book, uh, The Complete Angler. And he talks about his 16th century leaving London to go to these cool streams to where he really communed with nature and how important it was for, you know, his enjoyment of his life. And then, you know, that was his escape to go back to like the financial world in London at that time. So um, it's kind of a mismatch of a quote from that book, but it kind of talks about what we, what we appreciate about the river. I love it. That's so cool. So where can people find this beer? Uh, it's mostly in the metro Atlanta area right now. I think it's made it out as far as Augusta and a little bit north. Um, Dahlonega and Dal or Dalton area, I think, has some as well. So uh, you can always get it at the brewery, too. So we've got it on tap and pick up four packs here as well. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, well, thanks for sharing. So, so Mark, let's, yes. let's talk about your beer that was released in August correct? So yeah, absolutely. Yep, just went on yeah. draft at, uh, at our tap room here in the uh, Battery Atlanta, as well as uh, you can purchase our beer uh, for, at curbside to go at our Athens Brewery out of their tap room, but it's called Terra Print Pale Ale. Uh, Terra Print is sort of this overarching uh, name that we've given to all of our sustainability efforts, uh, not only through, you know, environmental impact, but also our impact on our local community. Um, so Terra Print, um, is a 5.5% ABV pale ale. Um, we left it unfiltered, so it's a nice hazy. Um, left the bitterness oh. nice and low as well. The common theme sounds like through all of our beers is that they're nice and sessionable summertime beers. Um, when we started talking about what we were gonna brew, um, we expected that um, the, the Atlanta Braves baseball stadium is sitting right behind me. Um, our, our pilot brewery is located inside Truist Park. We expected this to be something that people would be enjoying when they were coming to Braves games. Um, and then uh, the global pandemic struck. Unfortunately, that's not happening, but we wanted it to be a nice, easy drinking, sessionable pale ale, something that you could enjoy during the, you know, the hot August weather of, of Atlanta. Um, also, we serve Fox Brothers barbecue in our tap room here. So this is one of my favorite beers to pair with, uh, with our smoked chicken wings. It, It'll put out the fire from the from the spicy sauce, uh, as well as uh, kind of uh, quench your thirst with the, just enough bitterness uh, to get through uh, all the delicious food that, that we're serving here at the tap room. Love it. Do you know what portion of the proceeds are going to Chattahoochee sure, Riverkeeper? Sure, I, be, I believe 100% of the proceeds from this beer oh, will oh, wow. to Chattahoochee Riverkeeper. Yeah, we brewed a, a 10 barrel batch here at the ATL Brew Lab. Um, and we're going to see how, what the velocity looks like, see how that's doing and potentially brew some more. So yeah, we're, we're very excited and, uh, um, willing to help out with whatever we can. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So Becca, I'd love to turn this chat back to you. So, so why should people consider supporting Chattahoochee Riverkeeper and buying some of one of these awesome brews? <laughs> Well, I think it's been covered with our, our brewery partners. Um, <laughs> For sure. You know, we're in the midst of um, kind of a hot mess out in the world right now with this global pandemic. So um, people are heading out to the great outdoors. And uh, as was mentioned, what's better than a tasty brew on a hot summer day going down the hooch? So I myself am a fly angler. Um, I know... Uh, a lot of wow. folks like to enjoy uh, a six pack on the river or after the river. We've got our kayakers. We've, um, you know, got the folks who like to mountain bike along the river. So, um, yeah, so support CRK and have a drink while you're at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so to people who aren't a big fan of beer, how can they help the nonprofit Chattahoochee um, Riverkeeper? Become a member, whether um, 
you want to buy a t-shirt or you know give a $35 donation to be a member for a year or even you know come out to one of our cleanups uh, we have our annual sweep the hooch cleanup coming up on August 29th I mentioned earlier um, so all of the folks who participate in that event get a free one-year membership to our organization uh, folks can also, if you want to learn more about the Quality Hooch Campaign and uh, the Quality Beer Tour, you can text Quality Hooch to 41444. Again, that's Quality Hooch to 41444. And you can make a donation from there towards the campaign. Um, you can find out more information. It'll link you to the website. Um, and from that site, uh, we've got links to our brewery partner sites as well. Fantastic. Well, it looks like we've got some questions uh, from some of our viewers. Julia, could you help out with that? What, what do we have so far? Hey, sure. So we um, did have some come in when folks were registering for this webinar. Um, one of them was about how water from the Chattahoochee specifically affects the taste of beer. So we talked about how water does in fact change how a beer tastes, but could we talk a little bit about how, you know, what's the flavor of the Chattahoochee in your mm. beer? What does that taste like? Right, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Y'all Brian, Brian or, or Mark or Brian or Doug, do you guys have well, anything to you, say about that? Yeah, if you follow the Chattahoochee and get a mouthful of water, it tastes different than <laughs> what we use. <laughs> um, speaking yeah. from experience, right, Doug? Right, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's Mark. Yeah, I've done it. <laughs> nice. Yes. So yeah, I think... Yeah, go ahead, Mark. As, as Brian was, was talking about earlier, so the, um, the amount of solids that are in your water, basically the hardness versus the softness of the water would have a, a big impact on not only the flavor and, and the uh, sort of the, uh, the bitterness uh, of your beer, but also the mouthfeel, the texture of the beer would be uh, impacted by the hardness or softness of any water source. Julia, do we have any other questions? We haven't had too many others come in, but I know I'd be interested to hear what else are y'all doing uh, in relation to sustainability uh, within your breweries and, you know, how does that work? Yeah. I mean, for, for us, we, we try to recapture as much as we can of our water usage. Um, we give our spent yeast uh, to our farmer who picks up our grain. So we're not trying to, you know, use so much water to flush that down the floor drains. Um, that's a big part of, I mean, it's it's small amount, but it takes a ton of water to move, you know, several, you know, 20, 30 pounds of yeast, of dead yeast that you would normally just get rid of. Um, cattle feed, they love it. So that, that saves a little bit of water. Um, it's small, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's the aggregate kind of thing of what takes over the year. I mean, maybe that's, you know, a few thousand gallons that don't go down the sewer. Um, so I think that the biggest thing, especially for smaller brewers like me, is just trying to be mindful of, of where that water comes from and respect that it had a long journey to get to you and, you know, try to use as, as the least amount that we can. I mean, Mark touched on a great one about the CIP thing and sometimes more water is, is less beneficial, you know, and it's, so some of us for us is working with our chemical suppliers to make sure we're getting just what we need to and not overdoing it um, for rinse water and all kinds of things. Cause it, it's, it's extremely water intensive. And, you know, I think we do just need to be mindful of the resource that we're using. And I, to add to what Mark mentioned is our, when we built our brewery, we have a waste treatment um, system that's out the back with part of the standard that we put in um, it, for the purpose of making sure we know what's going out of the plant. So if we have it within spec in our standards at all time, and it's not like one of those oops excuses like, uh oh, what went down and we don't know it. Um, <laughs> yeah. but so, so that was a part of what we engineered into our system when we when we started. Our goal is also to use whatever we have. So from an environment, you know, all our spent grains go to the local farmers. Um, in that context, we minimize what it, like as same context as what Brian said, use a little bit of water as we can. We use it because it's, it's an easy thing to move, move system through to sanitize and clean. But it's how do we minimize that as a very conscious effort for us. 
Uh, it's not super expensive in the context of everything. It's just the right thing to do. So water, water's not free, but it's not one of the major things, but it's just the right thing to do is use as little as you can. And one of the uh, sustainability efforts that uh, we have undertaken recently, unrelated to water, but definitely related to uh, helping our environment, is we installed solar panels on the roof of our breweries in Athens, Georgia. So yeah, we are now brewing solar powered beer um, and we've released uh, a uh, wheat beer called Sunray Wheat, um, available in 12 ounce cans out there in the uh, Atlanta market and uh, sort of celebrating our, uh, our sustainability efforts. So cool, wow. Is there anything else you guys would like to share about your your beer that's a part of this quality beer tour? Yeah, or anything else you've got coming up uh, yeah. <laughs> you want us to know about. Oh, yeah. Uh, next weekend, we're doing our version of the Black is Beautiful beer. Um, so we're doing a two-day event, uh, Friday night here at the brewery and Saturday uh, afternoon as well. So that'll be a release with us. It's um, a collaboration with DJ Jelly, who's a local... Um, Kind of legend in the hip hop world and Deborah Van Treese, uh, so a local Atlanta chef who's pretty well renowned. So um, we're excited about that one. And then uh, I'm actually brewing right now our sweet potato farmhouse. So I'm just waiting for uh, the mash to clarify and uh, bought myself a little bit of time with this webinar to take a break. So yeah, that'll be coming out soon as well. The sweet potatoes. Yeah. You're able to bring sweet potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, do you incorporate that into the brewing process? Uh, I, so I roast them first and then puree them and add them to my mash. So I get kind of the sugars developed in the oven and then uh, any residual starch gets taken care of in the mash. Uh, the mash takes a little bit longer than our usual beers. Uh, it's about a, an hour and a half mash for us, but it takes a while for all that sweet potato to, to not gum up my pump in the Vorloff. So um, a lot of rice hulls and uh, hoping for the best because there's a high percentage of rye in there. So it's a labor of love making that one every fall. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. In our world, the next thing that we have coming out is a strawberry. Well, we have, we've just launched a lager that we called Lake Gold. So it's even though I said earlier, I'm not a big lager fan. There were plenty of people out there that are. So we got an easy drinking low alcohol lager, but the one that's more fun is our strawberry milkshake IPA that's coming out with the strawberries from Jamar Farms north of us. Um, that one's gonna hit the market in the next few weeks. So we've, we've got some out and draft right now. The cans, we're waiting on cans like a few people might be in this time of the year. It's just trying to get some cans and uh, that'll be the next relationship we have with Jamar Farms is to use local fruit. And we have a peach one coming after that again with Jamar Farms fruit. Like a peach milkshake, or so we have a strawberry oh, wow. milkshake one coming out, and then we have a and that one's called um, Shaky Straposition, and then we have a peach one coming out. Probably depends on what time the peach season comes out, and we'll call it uh, late September ish by the time we get it through. And that one's going to be called Shake Your Trees, but they're <laughs> <laughs> well, so. incorporating lactose, or how are you imparting well, there's that? A bit, milk there's a bit flavor. of that in there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's again, the local, how do we stay local as we can be? And that's JMR Farms Fruit is, uh, is the core of each of those two. So and, we, oh. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> At the ATL Brew Lab here in the Battery Atlanta, we've got a small five barrel pilot brewery and we're always brewing, you know, different stuff for people to come and try that you wouldn't see uh, out in the market. So uh, working on right now our uh, German Hellas. Um, which has been lagering for many weeks because we were shut down for a while. So it's, it's particularly tasty this time around, um, as well as some, some baseball related beers. Um, we just released another batch of Frenchies Blues, which is a, a blueberry Berliner Weiss that we, that we did in collaboration with Jeff Francoeur, a former Braves player, current uh, broadcaster on TV for the Braves. Uh, Jeff actually owns a blueberry farm in South Georgia, and we were able to go there. Yep, Spike, our brewmaster and founder, went down to the farm and, uh, and helped him uh, pick some blueberries, and we put them into the, uh, this batch of blueberry Berliner Weiss. Uh, so yeah, lots of fun stuff going on. That's so cool. And so beer. Hellas Lager, that's a bit more challenging than your typical lager. Yeah, for sure. It's a very delicate flavor profile. Um, there's really nowhere to hide. If you don't get that right fermentation character, um, there's not a lot of hopping that goes into it. So um, it's, uh, yeah, the degree of difficulty is a little, is a little, is a little harder on something like a Munich Hellas. 
but you're pro. You're pretty confident, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> it's going to well, turn out well. It, right? it tastes great. That's the, that's the real test. Yeah. <laughs> I had a question for the brewery partners about their, um, I'm curious what inspired your can art, Brian and Doug, and then uh, Mark Yell's poster for the, um, for the uh, tap beer. Yeah, I, I, for us, I mean, I think it was uh, just, I mean, thinking about the trout stream that is the Chattahoochee and, you know, trying to incorporate that sort of kind of look to it. Um, I think that was the biggest thing for us. And that was a design that we were really hoping to utilize. Uh, and this just kind of worked out really cool. Um, we, we tried to do a photo shoot of us trying to catch that can out of the river and it looked pretty good in the river. So uh, we're pretty happy with it, but yeah. Awesome. Uh, great. I like that one. Yeah, our, our graphics were, if you're looking at the label, it's um, like, uh, let me see the other hand, uh, the headwater brewery, like coming out of the woods and coming out of the out of the mountains, which since we are the headwater, we wanted to amplify that uh, with the big water dip drop, with the hop in the middle to say, let's make sure we remember we're drinking beer here, not water. Um, and then with the, the brightness from behind, just to highlight you know, the, the nice days on the river as part of the, the, the main elements as when we designed it. Sure, and then our uh, TerraPrint logo, something that we developed, um, again, as part of our overarching sustainability efforts, it features the turtle, the, uh, you know, the, the uh, famous Terrapin turtle. Uh, I was just looking around, we've got posters all over the tap room. Unfortunately, I don't have a good shot of it, but uh, log on to our website, terrapinbeer.com, and uh, you, you can see the, the TerraPrint turtle logo. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool. We've got some t-shirts available as well with the TerraPrint logo on them. Nice. Is there anything else you guys would like to share? Thanks for organizing this. Yeah, I really do yeah, appreciate you know, the fact that there's an organization that we can see all rally behind to keep our water pure and safe and, and for both our beer and also for the fun of the Atlanta community. And, and I will add that we are um, hopeful to continue this campaign in the years to come, uh, engaging more craft breweries, because uh, we got a 12 month year, right? So uh, engaging more craft breweries in our community, um, having some of you folks come back and um, hopefully getting that momentum back that uh, sort of wavered a little bit when we got caught with the, the pandemic, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you guys are interested in reading about more Georgia beer, I have a weekly beer column at GainesvilleTimes.com. And uh, also please subscribe to the Gainesville Times. But yeah, my column's called Kelsey Drinks Beer. Yeah, pretty original, right? <laughs> Love it. It works. It works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely fun. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks again for hosting. Thank you all. Thanks, Thanks very much. Hey, okay. cheers, you guys. Cheers. 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 cheers.